Chapter 18 There had been a pause in the war, as if both sides were allowing themselves to breathe before starting the next campaign. Optimus Prime thought he knew what was coming next. I. Aiken had been under siege for long enough that the Decepticons either had to finish it off or abandon the siege and fall back to their strongholds in the Badlands and in the south. In front of him he had a map of I. Aiken, and in his head he held an image of the vital connection between the reactor at Kallus and the energy-hungry Autobot capital. If Dark Energon was what Alpha Trion said it was, then the invasion of Aiken would be coming sooner rather than later. Optimus Prime had the impression that the Decepticons would use this new resource as short-sightedly as they had everything else they came across. They plundered and destroyed, letting their voracious appetites for Energon deplete the sources of that life-giving fuel. More than once Optimus Prime had speculated that the war might be ended not by either side winning on the field of battle, but by neither side being able to continue because they lacked the Energon to go on. Now the discovery of Dark Energon looked to have changed that calculus. What can we do? He asked Alpha Trion. We can do two things, Alpha Trion said. Either try to destroy Trypticon Station, or realize that our short-term strategy involves surviving the onslaught of Dark Energon and then counter-attacking when it runs out. The universe demands balance. Nothing can grant increased strength and ferocity if it does not exact a price later. Great, Jazz said. All we have to do is not get exterminated by Super Decepticons? Count me in. We need to change the ground of the battle, said Ironhide. Optimus Prime was nodding. That's what I was thinking. What we need to do is make sure they use up the Star Kenragon, if they really have it, as fast as we can make them. I'm sick of this running, Sideswipe said. Sick of it. When do we stand and fight? when we can win. No sooner, no later. Optimus Prime looked at these, his most trusted comrades. He did not want to waste their lives, or the lives of any Autobot. While they have Dark Energon and we don't, our priority has to be leveling the battlefield. So we strike them, make them chase us and waste their energy. Then when it is gone, we strike again, harder. Alpha Trion, will they invade Iacon because they have Dark Energon? The Covenant does not say, Optimus. You know that, Alpha Trion said. But if you are asking me for an opinion, I will tell you that I think the final invasion of Aiken is coming sooner rather than later. I do not think, however, that Megatron will mount a full-scale invasion before he has locked in a sufficient supply of Energon. Dark Energon will be exhausted soon enough that he will not be able to count on it. So what do we do? Jazz asked. Bumblebee added an interrogative gesture. Optimus Prime thought about it. We create guerrilla teams. Each of you will head one. Something interesting here, Prowl said as he came in from the grid nexus below Alpha Trion's study. You're heading one, two, Optimus Prime said. One what? A guerrilla team to work the Decepticons over and force them into wasting their dark Kinergon chasing us. Right, Prowl said. Optimus Prime ran through a list of other personnel he would want on these teams, but before going too much further with that he wanted to hear what Prowl had brought back from the data net. Now what were you talking about? Interesting what, interesting how? Interesting because it's a communication from Starscream, Prowl said. He proposes a meeting. Looking over the communications Prowl indicated, Optimus Prime saw that Starscream was in fact suggesting that they meet. There were two possibilities here, as far as he could see. The first was that Megatron was using Starscream's reputation for unchecked ambition as a way to set up an ambush. The second was that Starscream genuinely did want to meet, which could only be because he was trying to keep open the possibility of defecting to the Autobots. And that could only mean that he thought there was a possibility the Autobots might win this war. Optimus Prime was not sure how this could be possible. Therefore his instinct was to believe that the suggested meeting was a trap of some sort. I'll go, Prowl said. Bumblebee stepped forward and indicated his desire to go with Prowl, but Optimus Prime was already shaking his head. No, I can't afford to lose either of you, he said. And it's not a good idea to meet him. Prowl, sent him a message. 
tell him to get somewhere that has a communication channel that he can absolutely trust. If he wants to talk to me, that's how it's going to happen. Optimus Prime headed for the door. I'll be in the Hall of Records. Back in his old workstation, surrounded by the terminals and screens and interfaces that for so long had been his, Optimus Prime reflected for a moment on how far he had come. How far he had been forced to go, was another way to put it. The channel to Starscream was open, protected by the best security that Alpha Trion and the Records Authority Guild Masters could put together, and awaiting only the presence of Starscream himself. Optimus Prime allowed himself to consider a possibility that seemed so outrageous that it was a waste of time to contemplate. What if Starscream wanted to switch sides? The addition of him and his secret contingent would help the Autobot cause immensely. Whether it would be enough to swing the balance of the war away from the Decepticons. That was hard to say. But it sure wouldn't hurt their chances. An interface pinged and Optimus Prime patched himself into it. Without ceremony Starscream said, two things. One, if you don't know what Dark Energon is, you need to find out. Two, I need to know what I can expect from you if something should happen to Megatron. With no time to react, Optimus Prime said, a just piece is what I'm looking for. There was the faintest hint of hesitation in Starscream's voice before he answered. Understood, he said. The connection broke off and Optimus Prime wondered what, exactly, Starscream thought had been understood. The die is cast, thought Starscream. There were two things left to do, two assets left to put into play. He had to do some hard and exact thinking about how best to use each. Hotlink, he said to his tech engineer, an old Air Command mainstay. Eliminate all records of that channel. Then destroy the server. Then it was time for a quick trip to Kaon. On the way, Starscream did a flyby of the ruins of LT Hex Casino, remembering those first days of the war, when it could still be called something else. He had guarded Signal Prime, making sure that the other Decepticons didn't get carried away during the course of their operation. And, since then, by default as much as by design, the Air Command had been in charge of Sentinel Prime. From time to time, Megatron seemed to want to drag the old Prime off and torture him to death, or something equally unseemly. Starscream wanted no part of such a plan. His idea was to keep Sentinel Prime until he was needed as a bargaining chip, perhaps a ransom trade for a valuable Decepticon fallen into enemy hands. On this, as on everything else, Starscream and Megatron disagreed. The compromise arrived as seemed to be that Starscream would keep Sentinel Prime locked away in Moon Base 1, and Megatron wouldn't get any vindictive ideas until after the war was won. Today Sentinel Prime was standing quietly in his cell, back to the door. He did not move or react when Starscream walked in. You Autobots believe in redemptive action, atoning for failures of will, things like that, right? Starscream asked. I am not an Autobot said Sentinel Prime. I am Prime. I ally myself with no movement. Fair enough. But if I gave you a chance to make up for being such a coward at LT Hex, you'd take it. Sentinel Prime rounded on Starscream, who took a reflexive step back despite the shackles binding Sentinel Prime's arms to the sides of his torso. You dare? growled Sentinel Prime. I do dare, Starscream said, recovering his aplomb. You were a coward. You ran away from a fight instead of protecting the people who trusted you to lead. He stabbed right up to Sentinel Prime's face. Why do you think I decided to commit to the Decepticons? To his surprise, this last question made Sentinel Prime grin. Just how committed are you to the Decepticons, Starscream? He asked softly. From what I hear, that's an open question around here. Starscream chuckled. From what you hear? And what? Exactly, do you hear it in your cell? Sentinel Prime laughed right back in Starscream's face. What don't I hear? You would be surprised, I think, at how much information one gleans from the way one is approached by one's inferiors. Every interaction I have with an interrogator, or a tech come to replenish my inner gun, or the drone that comes through to clean. Add those up over billions of cycles and I know exactly what is going on both on this moon base and, I suggest, inside your head. 
Sentinel Prime took a step back, then continued. A long, long time has passed since you brought me here. I am not the same being I was then. Time and solitude are great teachers. Not a coward anymore, then? Is that what I hear you saying? Unshackle me and I will answer you, Sentinel Prime said calmly. I will certainly keep it in mind, Starscream said. He left Sentinel Prime there and returned to the command module at Moon Base 1. There were missions to plan, Autobots to tyrannize, and one particular special project that was going to be a little more complex than he had originally thought. It also was going to be quite a bit more rewarding. Megatron's voice boomed from Starscream's internal audio receiver. Where are you? Moon Base 1, Starscream said smoothly. Retrofitting and getting repairs done while you figure out what to do with all that Dark Energon. Interesting you should mention Dark Energon. Return to Trypticon. There are things you should see. Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you guys want to watch more like it, please subscribe to my channel and become part of the video game fanfiction plot. And please leave a comment down below and hit that like button. If you guys have any suggestions on any stories you guys want me to read, don't hesitate. They're always welcome here in the video game fanfic plot. That also goes for video games. Until next time, goodbye!